Hello, my name is Austin Belzner, and welcome back to the Austin B Media Podcast. But before we get into the podcast, I gotta tell you how you can support my work. The way I find my work, whether it be a review of a movie I rent or paying for Zoom, my Patreon is the way you can help offset those costs. Patrons like MB Labula, Brian Scuttle, Joseph Davis of Sif Hop, Matthew Simpson of Boston Friday, Tom Blackburn, and more all help to make episodes like this possible. So thank you to all you lovely patrons out there. Beyond financial support, you get some pretty sweet perks in exchange for that financial support. Whether you're into 24 hour early access to my reviews and this podcast, monthly surveys, giving direct feedback, commentaries, and just about everything in between, consider becoming a patron for as low as $1 a month at patreon.com slash austinbmedia. You can also save 16% off if you decide to subscribe annually. On top of that, it, if you're not ready to subscribe for whatever reason, you can get a seven-day free trial for every single tier I offer, even the more expensive ones. So with that, I hope you enjoy the show. Hello, my name is Austin Belzer. Welcome back to the Austin B Media Podcast. Today, I will be discussing the very first Disney animated film and the very first feature-length animated film in history, I think, which is Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs with my guest. Matthew Angeloni, Thanks. and a little bit, hi, a, a little disclaimer before we start, we are, we did not get the chance to watch the restoration version that recently came out on Tuesday, because for whatever reason, it was inaccessible, it feels like the only way to watch it is on the Blu-ray, which is weird, I didn't get any code or anything like that from Disney, and the it doesn't come out on Disney Plus till I believe the 16th is when it happens. But with that said, welcome to the podcast, Matthew. Tell us, tell us what you published recently and what you're working on. First off, Austin, thank you so much for having me. He's actually appeared on my YouTube channel a few times. Um, a few. I, a few, yeah. I have a YouTube channel. I cover like Golden Globes, Oscars. I'm actually covering Dance with the Stars this season. I just did my Motown night video. That was really fun to do. I gotta be honest with you. I we I tried to watch the first episode. I had to just skip around. I could I can't do it this season. I can't. There's something off. That's fine, but I recommend watching Tuesday's episode. It's Disney 100 night. Okay. The one that just aired? Years no, the one coming up. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, I definitely recommend at least watching that one. But yeah, yeah, what was the um, one last year? Disney Plus night? Last Disney year? Plus night, because it was only on Disney Plus, but now since it's on both. Yeah. No Snow White. <laughs> no Snow White on <laughs> Disney Plus. They have to fix that. It's weird because we're talking about the rest that the restorations only happening on the sixteenth for Disney Plus, but like you have the HD version, so it's confusing the language with this restoration. Is yes, you can watch Snow White right now on Disney Plus, but I don't think it's the restoration at all. I don't think, I think so it's either. the one. I think it's the one which which we both watched, which was the signature collection version from 16, I want to say. Um, yeah, it's, I think you're right about that. But yeah, but before we get into talking about Snow White, a new thing I've started doing recently is giving people the chance to shout out something where they somebody shouts out a movie show or anything before we get into the discussion. I like to shout out the, the spin-off series of the boys, Gen Z. If you haven't checked it out, Gen V. It. Gen V, thank you. But definitely check it out if you haven't already. Yeah, the what episode? Were we on five? Uh, episode five. Yeah, we're in five. Yeah. Of I believe no, it's not it's I don't think there are eight episodes. I think there are ten for this. That's yeah. But yeah, it it, it Gen V is actually a really good show in, a, in in a different way from The Boys because I think it's trying to be a different show. Um, obviously, it's a spinoff, but but I don't know. There's just something different about it. And 
I I caught something. My, I didn't catch something. I was watching an Easter eggs video, and apparently, I guess spoilers for The Boys season three if you haven't watched it. But if you're not watching Gen V, if you're watching Gen V, you you will probably watch The Boys season three. Somebody pointed out that when Huey goes to Red River, the adoption yeah. agency place. Somebody pointed out that Marie, you can see Marie on one of the screens. Wow. Like a profile, yeah, like a profile picture and everything. And I thought that was interesting. That is very interesting. But yeah, definitely check it out if you guys haven't already. It's a great TV show. Yeah, and I really like that they did the three episodes all at once. Because I think if they did the one and then waited a week, then... Number two waited a week. I think yes. it probably wouldn't have taken off because with any spinoff, I think you're asking a lot of people who are fans of the other show you're spinning off from. So yeah, I check it out on Amazon Prime Video. Or sorry, Amazon would like me to not use Amazon in that it's just Prime Video now. Yes, exactly. I can't tell you how many times in screener emails, and this is a bit of inside baseball. They tell me, don't use Amazon Prime Video, just Prime Video. <laughs> I I don't know why, but anyways, with that said, go check out Gen V on Prime Video. And yeah, let's talk about Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. I feel like we've got a lot to talk about, especially from the latter half with some more recent news. Well, I don't know, maybe talk about the remake and how... This, these kind of compare but anyways so the first thing this is the first time talking about a disney animated film and so i want to ask what was your experience growing up with disney animated films did you maybe start like i did with the 90s disney renaissance films like beauty and the beast hunchback of notre dame stuff like that or my... something else now believe it or not technically my first disney film was actually Who Framed Roger Rabbit, and then I worked backwards from there. I would count that as a Disney animated film. It's more of a hybrid, yeah, much in the vein of Happy Time Murders or something like that, or Chip and Dale, to use the Disney example. Yeah, um, my, my yeah, my parents stumbled on Who Framed Roger Rabbit by accident, and I was just mesmerized by the animation. And then I went back and watched like The Little Mermaid and Aladdin. And the Lion King, and that's when I started to really get into Disney animated films. What was interesting about Snow White, though, is up until last year, I've actually never seen it before. Really? Okay, that's interesting yeah. to me. That's just um, the one Disney movie that I kept missing. What is that one for me? Probably a few Pixar movies in like the mid 2010s, like Good Dinosaur and. Because a lot of people corrected me with on Elemental, where I said it was Peter Sohn's directorial debut. Apparently, I forgot that he directed The Good Dinosaur. So, good yeah. Dinosaur is a good movie. So yeah, I need to check that out. And there's a few. But I, as for me, I'll say I, I went Disney Renaissance first because I grew up in the 90s, in the early 2000s. With Lilo and Stitch and Aladdin, all I've seen all the Aladdins, by the way, Aladdin, King of Thieves, or Prince yeah. of Thieves, King of Thieves. I think it's Prince uh, Return of, of Javar, Lion King One and a Half, Lion King Two, Simba's Pride. Uh, I haven't seen what is the new one? They've got like a new Lion King series out. That's I forget what the I, title is. I know what you're talking about, but I can't. Yeah, well, like Scar's son is in it and stuff like that. Yeah. But, but yeah, I, I dove deep in, in the mid-aughts with Disney animation. So, yeah, I did that. And then at some, I feel like Goofy Movie. I love the Goofy Movie. Both of them. My favorite's probably Extremely Goofy Movie. <laughs> um, Same. And, gosh, what else have I? Oliver and Company, The Aristocats, Brave Little Toaster. Which I, I recently it. found out was at Sundance. It premiered at Sundance, which I think was like one of the rare moments where an animated film was part of the opening night selection. 
So that was interesting. Got to learn after my podcast with Thomas Stone Judge, the TIFF podcast. Yeah. But yeah, with that said, yeah, I think that covers all my Disney experiences outside of Pixar, because I feel like yeah. we could go on and on, on about Pixar and stuff like that. And I don't feel like I really, I don't know, miss any Disney movies that I didn't want to see or something like that. But yeah, I, I saw Snow White a lot when I was a little kid. Those, you remember in the early 2000s, maybe late 90s? when they came out with those clamshell VHS tapes. Yeah, Disney. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, so I had a stack of them. And we had Little Mermaid, Toy Story, Toy Story 2, and all those like clamshell VHS tapes from Disney. I think I just speed ran them. When I wasn't watching Toy Story, I was watching one of the other Disney movies. Or Nick, the, the orange VHS tapes. Yeah, uh, I definitely remember those. But yeah, I guess that covers my second question is remembering the first time you saw that because I guess it's really recent <laughs> that you saw Yeah, it was last year. Uh, my girlfriend, Gabby, loves Disney princess movies, like loves them. And she's like, I can't believe you haven't seen Snow White. So I'm like, all right, I'm watching it. I'm not missing it again. I'm watching it. It was really good. But it was interesting to watch it like last year. Like, it was interesting to watch it last year. And the it's interesting to watch the great-grandmother of all the Disney princess movies. Like, like no matter what happens going forward with Disney, Snow White will always be the first. Yeah, it had this... And I guess I probably have seen Snow White about the same amount of times as I've seen a Marvel movie. Because my school would have, like little my elementary school would have like movie days and stuff during math testing and for those who don't know it's what that is it's standardized testing that happens every year i think everyone over in the u.s it might be called something different in different states but but yeah yeah i had i had a girlfriend like that we had a list of homework i think one of the first times i saw actually the only time i saw night of the hunter was because of that homework assignment is what we'd call it we had a Google Doc of, here's my movies that I think really need to watch, and here's hers, her movies that she thinks I need to watch. But yeah, yeah, I think it'll always, like you say, live in that pantheon of just untouchable movies. Exactly. Because, like, like Beauty and the Beast, where I didn't necessarily like the 2017 remake, but it wasn't like, it didn't harm my opinion of the 90s one if that yeah makes exactly sense. no it does uh, unlike a book but that's another conversation yeah that's another conversation we'll get to that when we start actually talking about the remake and stuff like that because i do think that is a pertinent question of like how many people will be watching the rachel zegler remake that won't have i, I don't think they said i don't think they'll be the seven dwarves in the, in that one? They certainly don't look like it. They show a picture of the seven dwarves, and the clothing doesn't even scream from the Snow White movie, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's not even given the Snow White vibe. And, and to be clear, the reason I'm not really a fan of it is not because of the actress or anything like that, or any other kind of politics. It's just like, I, why remake something if you're going to change the entire thing and it's essentially like, make a new story? It's like Mulan. I I didn't... If it I, goes that route, I wouldn't be mad at it. Because I saw um, in the line remake Mulan, and yes, it was good, but it didn't feel like Mulan. It just felt I will like give you that. Story. I and I think that. that could be the same case with Snow White. Yes, it's going to be good, but it's, is it going to feel like Snow White? That's the million dollar question. Yeah, I definitely think so. But yeah, but I'm looking forward to Songbirds and Snakes whenever that comes out. I, but anyways, so I guess let's get into kind of overall thoughts on Snow White real quick. I would love to hear from you because you watched it more recently than I have. Um, 
Yeah, just what your thoughts are on the film. What did you like, dislike, especially watching it for the first time so recently? I didn't realize like how many movies took elements of Snow White and in their movies. The whole like the whole villain chasing the hero and I didn't realize that so many elements from other movies were from Snow White. So that was interesting looking back and realize, oh, that was from I I remember that from that movie. That's where they got it from. Overall, I really did enjoy it. I actually prefer this to more of the modern princesses and like this and the original Cinderella is probably up there in terms of my favorite Disney princess movies. Same. But and it was impressive that the animation obviously I know the animation was restored a little bit but I was impressed that the animation still held up being from 1937. The character designs and all that that was the part that was by far the most impressive. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I remember when I watched it recently. Yeah, just the for something you think there would be like film damage or something like that, and I don't know. It, it just feels like this untouchable movie in 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 many respects, and not in terms of the restoration. It's just like S tier <laughs> to use the internet term. Yeah, um, I know it's where I think everything was clicking on all cylinders and. What I think was interesting while I was researching this was that Disney actually didn't distribute this movie. No, they didn't. It was RKO Radio Pictures, which, um, for those who don't know at the time, that I think that was I think they were a music label at the time, weren't they? I believe so. But the biggest like, thing yeah. about RKO, yeah, RKO Radio Pictures. That's the exact term. Yeah, but, but yeah, I think they had they they released a few others, but I I thought that was interesting. But other than that, yeah, I just think it's really impressive for something so old to really still stand up. Yeah, and you talk about realizing that elements of Snow White were put into other movies. So I want to ask, what other things? What elements are you talking about? The Maleficent movies or? Yeah, the, obviously the Maleficent movie. That's probably the most obvious picture from Snow White. But also Enchanted was the big one that I noticed. Oh, yeah. Enchanted isn't Snow White, but yet it had so many Snow White elements. The evil queen, the singing, the even the talk, even the animals. I didn't real. I did, at the time I didn't realize that that's pretty much Snow White. Just wait. Completely. So I gotta ask. I gotta ask. So you you've seen Shrek, right? Yes, I have. And of course so, Shrek. I was literally about to get to that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So did that click for you when you watched this? Like yeah. all the Snow White references in there? Yeah, I'm like, wow, that's where it finally came from. But now I get it. That is wild to me. I'm sorry, that's just wild. But to me, Enchanter was the big the Yeah. Big. That's my favorite Disney movie of all time, Enchanted. Really? Okay. Are, are we talking about all brands, Disney, or uh... all brands? All brands. Okay. That's by far my favorite. Okay, mine's probably one of the Toy Story movies somewhere around there. Um, Toy Story because... three is a very second. I'm one of the people who I. I wrote a whole article that's now lost to time because I accidentally hit delete on the post. But um, I wrote a whole article back when people were asking, is Toy Story 4 a necessary movie? Because uh, I actually thought, I don't know, I, I liked that um, movie quite a, a fair bit. I, now I think it's in my ranking. It ends up somewhere around Toy Story 2. So it's like probably like Toy Story 3 uh Toy Story 4 and then Toy Story 2. But but anyways, um, maybe I'll record a Toy Story podcast when Toy, Toy Story 5 comes out. Yeah, I'll be but in yeah. there. Did you ever watch the Huntsman movies? Yeah. I knew that was Snow White, so that one... Okay. Like, I saw the I saw the Huntsman movie, but I didn't see the actual Snow White film until okay. last year. 
So I was aware of the story, but I didn't see the full movie until last year. Got it, got it. Man, I'm so envious. I it, That's so cool. Because you know how there's like that thing of if you could erase one movie from your head and watch it again for the first time. I feel like that. this is one of those. I would agree with that. Same with that in Hellboy or Shape of Water. Or, oh gosh, what's the Birdman? There's so many there's so many possibilities. But three and four would be interesting to rewatch for the first time. I don't think I could handle rewatching Toy Story 3 again for the first time. I don't... But, but getting to that, we're, so obviously there is... I think we're already talking about it, so there's being almost 100 years old, almost... Yeah, it's almost. Yeah, so it's about five years. So, uh, I, I guess the first question, because this topic is brought up a lot online, how do you feel that the story has aged over those ninety-five years? I feel like it aged very well for a ninety-five-year-old movie to have so many references being used in other movies is extremely impressive. Especially nowadays in our culture when everything's gone in a flash. It's impressive that this movie was able to held the test of time. I feel like it didn't age well. We're always going to talk about the remake soon, probably, in this. Yeah. So we'll talk about that a little more. But separate from that, I think it aged very well. Yeah, I'm one of those where I'm like, where I think it gets into kind of my biggest problem with, I guess, updating something. I, I know what you mean. Yeah, and, and it's just, I don't know, I don't... I, I feel like it's aged pretty well. I get it. Because I think, yeah, I just... I don't know, I feel like there's something timeless to it, if that makes sense. Um, it does. Because I think people can find themselves in the story just like they could with The Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast and things like that. That kind of self-insert kind of thing because and it's interesting because I think I don't think you get to really know a lot about Snow White before everything happens. Before no, the you really events of the story. I think it's just like this, this is one of those, again, I guess we're referencing Shrek here the storybook opening up and where you're jumping into the middle of the story and here's what has to happen in order for this plot to be resolved. It's actually, when you think about how an animated film is made nowadays, it's relatively simplistic. It, yeah. It, we need, we are at destination A, we need to get to destination B. How do we do that? Oh, here's how. And that's the plot, is the how. Whereas with something like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Meet Mayhem, it's okay, here we need to get from A to B, but to get to B, we have to go to C, then go to D, then go to E, then go to yeah, F. Yeah, exactly. I, and then back to B. And then, oh, we got to circle around to A, because, yeah, it's just, it, it, it's nice to have to just have a clear A to, A to B line. If yeah. that makes sense. But yeah, I guess with that, we should probably talk about all the things that, I don't know, we'll just talk about legacy of it. What's your opinion of its legacy? I love its legacy. I love reading about it, especially the Oscars. Like in the 1939 Oscar, Walt Disney won an Ari Oscar for it, but they gave him one normal Oscar and seven miniature Oscars. I thought that was very cool to read about. And then they had Shirley Temple of all people present the award to him. I thought that was clever. I forgot about that. But yeah. Yeah. And, I, yeah. and being in one of the movies to be chosen in the Library of Congress, that was one of the first 25 movies to be preserved for him. That was really cool to read about. Yeah, and I think it's in the AFI 100 movies list. It is. Yeah, but yeah, I, and for those who don't know, maybe don't know what an honorary Oscar is, it's 
I don't want to say. I feel like I would get in trouble for saying this, but I feel like it's a kind of hey, we forgot to give you this award, so he here's a recognition award, thing like that. In, in this particular case, I would say yes, because this uh, was literally the year after it was eligible for the Oscars. Yeah, this was hey, we forgot to nominate your movie. Here's eight Oscars. Are we good now? <laughs> yeah, just do that with Ryan Gosling. But um, here, here's uh, your eight Oscars for Barbie. No, but yeah, I think it, that part is especially funny to me now that Disney owns ABC, which produces the Oscars. But but yeah, I, I feel like that's again. I think we're going back to that whole thing of being an untouchable or S tier movie, where I think there's. I think if I meet somebody who says this is a bad movie, I think we're going to have a conversation. <laughs> um, I would just walk away from them. I don't trust you anymore. You're not my friend. Go away. Because maybe you could point out some things like the line drawings not being clean, but that's almost endearing in a sense where at this, I don't know if you know about this, but at this point, it's been proven throughout many of the, the films of the, this era or at least in the 90s era that they would take pencil drawings from animations from other movies and stick them onto other Disney movies which I f found fascinating Same. there are animations from Bambi and Lion King and Jungle Book and I think oh what's the other one I'm thinking of probably Robin Hood there's probably yeah, a few others Hood. but yeah there's like a whole thing with that there's like a whole youtube video comparing the two but I, I but with all that messiness i think there's something endearing to the the efficiency of it of just saying hey here's what we're good at let's just do that especially when we go into the 90s where it became animated movies became commercialized where it's like okay you're all these disney studios that are making uh, animated yeah, movies. Yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Internet or Matt, uh, if, uh, if I'm wrong on this, but I feel like I, I want to say that this movie is what inspired Pixar to do animated movies. I, I want to say. I don't know that for sure, but I wouldn't be surprised. Or like this era. Yeah. I don't know that for sure, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was. Yes, and, and yeah, you talk about references in other media, Shrek, both the Enchanted movies, and yeah, I, I just feel like it's, I, I feel like we're talking in circles, but yeah, I just, I, I love this movie, but yeah, gosh, what else could I say about this movie? I, I, I have haven't something. said a million times. Yeah, I have so. something. Snow White made so much money that Disney was able to use the profits to finance a new studio in Burbank. Hilarious. And um, it's still there to this day, and thanks to them, they were able to complete Pinocchio and Fantasia because of the, because of the money. It was able to begin production on Dumbo, Bambi, Alice in Wonderland, and Peter Pan, thanks to Snow White. Crazy. So Snow White basically saved Disney. Pretty much. At least and... back then. Yeah, back then. And I think what's interesting about this time period for Disney is they're, I don't know, almost like an independent studio to me. Because, again, they weren't distributing any of their movies. They were going through other people. But yeah. They were basically like A24, like before yeah. they became their own studio, like A24 was part of other studios' movies. And now look at them. It's like the similar model almost. Yeah, except for there was a, no Netflix, it was just RKO and MGM and stuff like that. But yeah, which is crazy to think about because today I was looking at uh, possible Spirit Award nominees, like people I think would be nominated. And now Amazon, I forgot that Amazon M merged with MGM, so now they have the yeah. same FYC date. And it's not MGM FYC anymore. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But with that said, gosh, any other references you want to get to before we tackle the big the big thing of the remake? I'm ready for the remake. I want to talk about the remake. Okay. So I guess 
actually, before we do that, what would you, your rating be? I feel like I know what your rating would be for this, but out of ten, I would give it like a nine, nine and a half. Okay. I wouldn't call it a perfect ten, but it's still pretty up there. I would say I I use the five star scale, but I I don't know. How do you feel about five stars versus ten point scales? It really depends on what you want. It depends how you want to do it, really. I like doing it out of 10. It's easier for me to process it. But Yeah, that way you don't you, have to double up the number. Yeah, but if people want to do five stars, they can. There's nothing against it. Yeah, so out of five, and I'll convert to 10, 10 uh, afterwards, I think it would probably be a 4.5 out of 5. Which yeah, I guess would, that would be enough. Yeah, I think out of 10, 10, I would actually bump that up a little bit because there's more flexibility in a 10-point scale. And I'd yeah. probably say 9-5 because I think the only knock I have against it is, and this is like a minor thing, so it might even be a 10 for me, is that I think the way the movie is paced, which sounds ridiculous because of how short this movie is it's how how long is it yeah it's an hour and 23 minutes but i think the pacing is a little off at points where it's okay let's get to the b plot let's get to yeah i know what you mean like it just slows down at random points and i I don't know it just that, that that didn't work for me I get that. It makes sense. Uh, right, but yeah, right. four five, four point five or nine five out of ten. Uh, and then you said what nine nine five? Yeah. So we're about the same. Yeah. Yes. And again, that is a small little nitpick. If a movie isn't paced right, I think for me, it really just brings it down for me. That's fair. Uh, all right, let's talk about the remake. This is what I've been waiting for. So, yeah, will you be watching? That's the main question. Will you be watching the remake? I have to see a trailer first. I cannot decide until I see a trailer. Have Did you see the leaks? Yeah, I'm not thrilled. <laughs> Yeah. My big problem is it, and I talked to Austin before this started, was it just didn't feel like Snow White. Yeah. It just it felt like we were watching different characters rather than Snow White. I compared it to the twenty twenty Mulan, good movie, but still didn't have the Mulan elements, and it's looking like Snow White's gonna follow that. Yeah, like, I. <laughs> And I I just hope I now let me say I will be the first to say um, I'm gonna watch this no matter what if even if this is um, um, a train wreck I'm still gonna see it because I I don't know about you but I always have an innate curiosity about when something is remade what the changes are that makes sense. Beauty and the Beast, the 2017 one, to recap, how did you like? How did you feel about the other remakes? I there was three of them. I think was great. The Cinderella okay, one, the Cinderella one, which I feel like everyone forgets about, which they should. Oh, I didn't see that. That's one I haven't seen. No, it's amazing. Trust me. If um, I'll explain why I like all three after the Beauty and the Beast one, and the Little Mermaid one. What I like most about all three of them is they paid respect to the movie, but yet still had Martin Day flair to it. And I think that's where the Jungle Book, The Lion King, and Aladdin failed, is that they did too many changes to the story to the point it didn't feel like the original story. Especially Mulan, but it's not like these movies were bad, but you you have to respect the original movie, too. Yeah, you can't just completely change it. Throw the 
have the characters be the same name and call it a day. You still need to respect the original movie. And that's the one thing that worries me about Snow White, is that it's not looking like it's going to respect the original movie. Yeah, or at the very least, do what Little Mermaid did. Uh, did you see that? Yeah, I mentioned that. Okay. That had uh, the right. That had the correct amount of movies, and yet still had more. Yet still had some modern day elements. I new song. Yeah. I hated Little Mermaid, the remake, and not because of the reasons bandied about on the internet. It just felt like it was trying to be different for the sake of being different. Um, I get that. I get that. Those updates for that were really good. I, I think it works well. But I just think there was certain parts where I'm like, do I need a rapping bird? No. Do I need to see the nightmare fuel that is flounder? Oh, and, thanks for um, that reminder. And uh, Sebastian. <laughs> there's certain elements of it I did not like, but there's I feel like there's more good in that movie than bad. And that's what I'm looking for in a Disney remake. Fair enough. I, I guess with me, obviously, I didn't like Little Mermaid. I didn't see Peter Pan and Wendy. Did you see that? I completely forgot that, that movie exists until right now. Wait, was one of that was that one of the ones that got delisted off of uh, Disney Plus? Probably. <laughs> I feel like it did. But yeah, I completely forgot that movie existed till right this moment. Yeah, it came out in April. But no, it's not. It's apparently still on there. I was thinking of Crater. That's what I was thinking of. I'll, I'll, um, I'll watch. I'll watch it before I get delisted because I never even. I totally forgot about it until right now. Yeah, and then there's uh, Pinocchio from last year, um, which was more nightmare uh, fuel. Yeah. Like, I think it did the darker tones really well, um, but I think that's all it did very well. Yeah. Um, everything else was pure nightmare fuel, down to the I animation, agree. which I think was getting into problems going on with the VFX industry right now, but that's the topic for another time. I like Cru Cruella. Did you see that? Oh, Cruella's great. I forgot. I always forget that. It's a remake, but not... I'd say it's more of a prequel than I would say. Because we haven't yeah. got to the Dalmatians yet in that movie. That's yeah, why I did Spoilers didn't... for the ending of that movie, but that, it, 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 it ends where I think Dalmatians starts. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I really like that. Especially the costume design. That was really good. Awesome. Talked about Mulan. Yeah. Lady and the Tramp was okay. It was... That's, I think it... I forgot about it. Lady and the Tramp could have been better if it wasn't a streaming. Didn't launch with Disney Plus. I because, know what you mean. Yeah, it just felt... It felt like a streaming movie. Yeah, it felt like that movie was made for streaming, and that's pretty much it. I didn't see the most recent Maleficent, so I'm just going to count that out. Lion yeah. King, that was, yeah, that I, I think that and Jungle Book are tied with me with the worst of them. Um, I would say that because, yeah, I just don't. It felt like I was watching a Nat Geo documentary rather than what the movie was actually trying to remake. They were too realistic. Yeah. Simba is not reacting at all to anything that's going on around him. But mm -hmm. hey, that soundtrack was a banger, though. Yeah, I will give her for the soundtrack. Uh, and speaking of that, Aladdin, really good. I, I actually really like that one. And those people um, are doing the music for Snow White. Uh, let's see, what, is, oh, what are their names? Uh, ben Pasek and Justin Paul. Are doing the music for Snow White. So, the yeah, Bo <laughs> is in the bottom tier for me. I don't think Christopher Robin no. counts. Do you count that? No, because it's not really okay. a live remake. It's not a remake of any specific Winnie the Pooh movie. 
But yeah, I think it would go well, that was like really... Aladdin. Yeah. I think my t- my Mount Rushmore of live action remakes would be for Disney would be Aladdin, Cruella, probably what would I can't count Christopher Robin, so Beauty and the Beast. And then I don't know. I, I would put Mulan up there. It wasn't like offensive bad. It was just like it tried to do something new. And that's, I think, where a lot of these Disney live-action remakes land. It's, it, it wasn't terrible, but, yeah. unless you're talking about Pinocchio or, or Lion, not Lion King. But yeah, Lion King. Um, Jungle Book. And Jungle Book, which I walked <laughs> out of the first time I, I uh, saw it in theaters. I don't blame you. Yeah, but I did end up catching the rest of it, unfortunately. But with that, what 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 do what do you want to talk about with the remake? Other than kind of where you think it'll I don't, land for you. I don't think I'm gonna like it again. I need a trailer. Okay. I think I know. I saw the pictures. I know the pictures are out, but until I have a feeling of how the movie's gonna go, I don't want to say I'm gonna see it or not. Because I was skeptical about The Little Mermaid. The second I saw the trailer, I was sold on it. And yeah, I and wasn't those... skeptical about The Little Mermaid because of Holly Bailey. It was because of the wonderful fish elements that was thrown in the movie that scared me. Yeah, and I probably need to review Little Mermaid. But the other thing for me with Little Mermaid, for me, was it was way too dark in that ocean. I. There was I had to move my TV. Yes, I'm one of those who watches everything on his monitor, but I I don't know I don't know what was going on there, but it was so dark I couldn't see anything. I know why they did that was to be more realistic ocean, but I don't think that translates well on screen. Like when you hear the idea of oh we're gonna treat dark like the ocean, you think oh that makes sense that sounds great. But when you see it in practice, you're like, no. I think uh, Wakanda Forever did really good with that. Um, because yeah. it, but the difference everything... With... Go ahead. But the difference with Wakanda Forever is it wasn't trying to be a realistic country, if you know what I mean. Like, it was yeah, just trying I, to be a, its own world. Like, when yeah, the Little Mermaid are trying to be the actual ocean. Yeah, and I think, I I think they should have looked at Aquaman, funnily enough, for the underwater scenes, because I think that did it really well. Yeah, I would agree with that. But anyways, and I guess to catch people up on what the remake is and why we're against it, I I should probably give some background. So, let's see, it's gonna be. This is going to be like Little Mermaid was, and based on the fairy tale rather than the Disney movie. Because, for those who don't know, Snow White was a Brothers Grimm tale that was published in 1812. So it's going to be taking more mm-hmm. of those elements while still being a musical fantasy film. Stars Rachel Zegler and, as Snow White and Gal Gadot as uh, the Evil Queen. Yeah, let's see. Greta Gerwig wrote this screenplay, which is interesting. Yeah. I, I don't know. I would have loved a, a universe in which she directed Barbie and this, but you can pick, you only pick one. She chose um, Barbie. She chose Barbie, which is the better choice. But instead, who's directing this is Mark Webb from the Amazing Spider Man movies and a ton of other movies. I think he did he do 500 Days of Summer? I think so, yeah, he did. Yeah, okay. But yeah, and as far as I can tell here from the cast list, the only returning character is Grumpy. Oh, and the Huntsman. But the, yeah, that's... And a few weeks ago... Not, well, not a few weeks ago. It was a few months ago. That the leak happened, where we're on D23 yeah. recently, where we got first looks at like the costume design and 
let me talk about that first. So, have you watched some of? Yeah, I'm behind. I did not see the last episode, so don't spoil it. No, I, I'm just going to be talking about character design. Oh, and yes, I definitely have. A, a lot of people's criticism with Ahsoka and a lot of these uh, animated movies that have been translated into live action, and not just Disney live action remakes, but certain Star Wars characters in live action, certain certain other characters in other. My mind's blanking right now, but there's this tend to over exaggerate things while also trying to make them realistic looking. I may, I, hopefully, future me edits some the photos right here. So, future me, you know what to do. But yeah, I, it's not a good look, literally. It just, it's that thing of you're trying to adapt an animated character to live action without realizing hey that shade of yellow is way too bright for a camera and yeah it, just everything look, looks too bright it just looks over saturated and then I think the evil queen's headdress is like black everything black and purple um which is, yeah they, uh, they did think about that they made the costumes without thinking about the lighting. Yeah, so it's That's like what it sounds... either. Yeah, so maybe I hope the color grading, <laughs> somebody somebody um is color grading it to clean it down. <laughs> uh, but uh, but yeah, I I uh, yeah, I'm not excited. Um, um, I just I don't know. It might. It might end up surprising me, but I don't know. I just it ain't for me. But that makes sense. But I also think that kind of ties into. I I think some of the thing I'm bumping up against with the remake, and especially with my memory of the 1937 film, uh, with this remake is, I think I'm. Slowly, like, starting to realize, especially with Mulan, uh, I, I realize this is that I I don't think I'm necessarily the target audience anymore, or the people who have seen the 1937 movies aren't the target audience for this anymore. All I hope from Mark Webb, if he's not listening, I I don't think you are. Don't go Amazing Spider-Man with it. Go 500 Days of Summer with it. I haven't seen that film, but I've seen footage of the film, and I liked that vibe for Snow White. What would you think? What would, what advice would you have to give? Respect the original movie. I'm not saying you have to copy it word for word, but you have to respect the original movie. Word for word, bar for bar? But you need to respect it and not just completely ignore it and do what you want. Because people remember the 1937, excuse me, the 1937 Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. You need to respect that and know that's what people are not like expecting, but wanting to see more of going into the movie. Yeah, and don't do the thing of Little Mermaid where it's like, Oh, here's a food to the original movie where in Little Mermaid, hey, I've got this little jingle hopper thing. And the voice actress for the 90s animated movie who gives it to her. I'm like, okay, so that's a little much. But, yeah, exactly. But that would be my advice as well. Just respect it. And as far as the writing goes, I would say respect that screenplay as well. Because I have a feeling there's a specific reason. I don't know. I feel like screenplays get re rewritten on set all the time. And I hope that doesn't happen here because I, I don't know. I feel like Greta Gerwig is pretty. Uh, now, that said, Greta Gerwig's not the only credit on there. Aaron Christina Wilson is also on there. But yeah, just respect the writing too. Maybe. Yeah. And then for, I guess, the music, I would say 
since you've made really good songs for Aladdin 2019 follow that same exact formula. But without I agree. the... But you don't need... I, I, I will say this as a musical theater fan. Listen up. <laughs> I don't need... I don't need an I want song. I don't need it. <laughs> I, I agree. The Jasmine I want song is probably the worst part of that movie of Aladdin 2019. The other original music in that movie is fantastic. And I hope what with whatever Guy Ritchie does with uh, what whatever he's doing with Aladdin, I don't, I don't know what he's doing with that. I don't know if he's making Return to Jafar or Return of Jafar or there's some King Anders spinoff in the works. Anyways, we're not here to talk about Aladdin. But yeah, just follow the same vibe of the original. Was Snow White a musical ori originally? I don't think so. No. But that's going to be interesting. <laughs> so it's going to be all original. I think, I think so. so. Then I guess my No I Want song, because I don't need it, but just look at what Stephen Sondheim does. I know that's a tip, typical thing, or maybe look at Tick Boom or stuff like that. Follow those kind of cultural influences without the I Want song. And, but don't get, I, all right, listen up. If I hear one, a single Lynn manuel manuel Miranda lyric, if I hear even one line, one stanza, <laughs> I'm going to lose it in the theater. I, look, I, I loved Hamilton. Okay, I didn't love it. I can't even uh, think. I can't even feign that. It was okay. It, it, my Hamilton was okay. Okay, Moana hit was his. Yeah. yeah. But I don't. I better not hear Lin Manuel Miranda in any of this. <laughs> if I get, if Grumpy starts rapping, I'm gonna lose it. I'm not. Uh, anyways, that's my rant. But yeah, I think I'm very interested to see. Going back to the 1937 film, I'll be very interested to see how that restoration looks because I remember with the 2016 Signature Collection, there's a lot of transfer issues with that because I, I think it was the first time it was available on Blu-ray. It was. I think the lines were looked really off. I don't know how else to say that. It's just the lines looked like the line thickness was off. It, it like the line thickness was doubled. Looking at, oh gosh, looking at the, so yeah, looking at this restoration comparison. Now it's only the original and the restored version that they're comparing on the Disney Plus site, but I can already see. Oh, okay, I'm looking at it. And it looks like they removed the grain entirely from the image. Mm. But the shadow work is intact and, but, and more defined. I'll, I'll be interested to see what this looks like on Disney Plus with all the compression Same. that it's likely doing and things like that. Because this is going to be the first time it's available in 4K. I think with HDR and Dolby Vision and all, all the accoutrement you expect from 4K. So that'll be interesting. I might even break out my 4K TV for that. Just like I did with Avatar The Way of Water when that released on Blu-ray, which is reference quality material. For those who haven't like watched the digital version, it's like pretty much a one-to-one -one transfer. Anyways, um, yeah, I'll be interested to see that. Are you going to check out the restoration uh, when it comes out on the 16th? I don't, I don't know right on the 16th, but I definitely will check it out. Yeah, I feel like there's something coming out that day that might prevent it. Let me check. It's a Monday. Right. Yeah, I don't think there's anything that day that's particularly pressing. I'm looking, and the only thing that week is Talk to Me comes out digitally 
Oh, the Hellboy game comes out on the 18th. Ooh. And then, yeah, so then Gen V Episode 6 on the 20th, along with a bunch of video games. But yeah, I'm definitely going to check it out on Monday. I, I still need to check out Loki for this week's episode. I can't tell if it aired yet. Probably did, but I'm going to be checking out that, Gen V. But yeah, it's going to be a pretty slow week next week, so I'll definitely check it out. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll be interested. Yeah. Before we wrap up, I did an interesting experiment. Okay. So when we asked what was my first Disney anime movie I'd watch, I actually tweeted that question out to see what some people would say. Mm-hmm. What's interesting is everybody had a different answer. Interesting. Little Mermaid, Hercules, Lady and the Tramp 2, the second one specifically. Yeah, adventure, Cinderella, really? Arist- I'm serious. Cinderella, Aristocats, Lion King, and Aladdin. Interesting. That's... But it was so interesting to see everyone had a different answer. All right. The person who whose first movie was Scamp's Adventure, this is your invitation to come on the podcast and explain yourself. I... <laughs> That is so wild to me. Maybe the the person uh, that tweeted that is uh, Gen Z, I, and I don't know. Just, that was just c- coming out because I knew that come out in two thousand six somewhere around there. Yeah, something like that. Back when they uh, Disney was doing pumping out a lot of direct to DVD sequels, uh, which fun fact there was a, a lot of the Toy Story movies you haven't seen were going to be directed to DVD. Like, Toy Story 2 was going to be about Andy going to his grandma's house. Toy Story 3 was going to be about Buzz being recalled and shipped to Taiwan. I would have hated both of them. I actually really would have loved that Toy Story 3. But it would have been too dark. Exactly. Um, There was Buzz Lightyear Star Command, The Adventure Begins. That wasn't canceled. That was just like what they were coming out with at the time. But yeah, I, I actually highly recommend a, a lot of people go and check out those direct to DVD ones, especially Aladdin two and three, because I don't know. I, I I feel like a lot of people sleep on those two, and or maybe even Lion King one and a half because that was really cool. Wait, but anyways, I want to talk to you, Lion Scamps Adventure person. I. Send me a DM, and we I will make it my priority to have you on the podcast to talk about Scamp's adventure, because what in the world? I'm going to send you that. I'm going to send you that person's tweet, like, right now. Okay. So. It reminds me of that person who went to a gaming convention and said their first video game was lego star wars 2 on the xbox 360 and i was like oh no i'm getting old aren't i but yeah i'm sure a lot of people's first video game is probably minecraft so anyways let's see with that said let's get into let's get into what's happening over the next week since we were already talking about it a little bit okay so i will have after this, probably by the time this podcast publishes, I'll have podcasts for Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. I'm recording that tomorrow. Nice. I'm recording a Barbie spoiler discussion with Elise, uh, who I recorded the Barbie, the main discussion with next Wednesday. And then on next Friday, a fair, a fair Play podcast episode. So that's all happening within the next week. Yeah, I'll be re- I'm really interested to see how those turn out. So I hope you all check those out, whether you're listening or watching. I've al- I'll also have a, a lot of interviews coming out. I've, I just recorded one with Andy Valentine of the Mattachine Family, which is premiering at Movie Fest 35. Probably by the time this is up, it'll already be out and premiered at New Fest. So with that said, 
Thank you all for listening or watching to the Austin Media Podcast. I've been your host, Austin Belzer. Uh, if you've enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and leave a rating and review on your favorite podcast app or on YouTube. I, I guess you could do that. You can also follow me on social media at Austin B Media everywhere except Twitter, where it is at Austin B Media underscore. Because, like I've said every time I've mentioned th this, I've been trying to get that at Austin B Media Twitter account for literally months, and the at Austin B Media account is suspended because they were impersonating me, but I still don't have access. But with that said, where can people find you online, Matthew? People can find me pretty much everywhere under Matthew Anzalini. My YouTube channel is also Matthew Anzalini. Check it out. I have more Golden Globes coverage. I also did a video with Kyle Arwing on the interesting DC and Marvel news that just came out recently. That will probably Which be up that? tomorrow. We talked about the DC recasting everyone, as well as the Got Marvel it. TV news and like them trying to get their, their their stuff together, pretty much. Yeah. And then I'm also going to have a video next Wednesday on Disney Night on Dance with the Stars, so check that out, too. Austin and I will be doing a live stream on the 28th, which is mm -hmm. current Golden Globe predictions, and we'll all be in costume for that, so you definitely don't want to miss that. Yeah, it's fun fact. You, people have already seen my costume. So I'll just leave it at that. But with that said, I'll have all those links in the description for you, whether you're on YouTube, podcast player, wherever. And yeah, article too. But thanks again. I'll see you all next time on the Awesome B Media Podcast. Thanks, everyone.